Okay, so again, my name is Jim Norton. I work for Bridgewave Communications, um, based here in New York, support our customers on the East Coast and also our federal customers. Um, today's uh, webinar is going to uh, focus on uh, an update on our Flex 4G 10,000 product, which we started to ship, uh, I believe it was Q4 uh, 2017, so more than a year time frame. So over, over the last 12 months or so, we've added some new features and just wanted to get everybody updated on the product itself since it's probably one of our top selling products over the last couple, uh, last 12 months. So um, one thing, if, if you do have questions, there's a question and answer session uh, on the side of the webinar. Uh, so if you have a question, um, uh, you know, type in your questions and then what I'll do is I'll get to them at the end of the webinar then. So. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so for people that haven't uh, worked with Bridgeway before, just want to give you a quick update who we are, what we do. So company is uh, was founded back in 1999, uh, focused on millimeter wave uh, radios for the first few years, went through an acquisition with Remick Broadband back in 2013, and at that time added uh, microwave products to our, our uh, product family. Uh, we're based in California, headquartered in San Diego, um, and you'll see, you know, different pictures up here as far as uh, R&D facility in San Diego, marketing, uh, finance, and things like that. And also, we have a high high production uh, factory facility we actually produce the product out of. Um, you know, a few years back, uh, Remick actually was bought by a company called Mosley. Uh, and so we're part of the Mosley uh, diversified companies. They have a number of high-tech companies. Uh, they're based in uh, uh, Santa Barbara, California, and uh, we, we partner actually with a number of the companies and some of the products we do come out with. So, uh, As far as product line, here's our current product line uh, as far as for uh, Bridgewave. Um, uh, today we're going to focus on the Flex 4G 10,000. Uh, but you can see on the 80 gigahertz spectrum, we also have products uh, for the uh, gig and uh, which is our Flex 4 1000. The lights are a three gig product. Uh, and then we have microwave products, um, which we introduced uh, last year, which is our Navigator uh, ST, which is our single core product, and our DT, which is our dual core product, which are both shipping as of today. So, Okay, so just a little history on the... Uh, uh, Flexport series. Uh, so the actual first product uh, that we came out with, which ba was back in 2009, uh, this was based on the original Flexport 80 platform. So some of our customers have been with us for a while, probably have seen some of these um, uh, product names before because they probably own them and, and have them, you know, uh, within their networks. Um, so what's nice about uh, the, the 10,000 product, it's the fifth generation in this series. Um, we kept the same GUI interface for uh, all five generations. So if somebody started using the uh, Flexport 80 and migrated down the line, uh, they really didn't have to le learn a new GUI system. Uh, the other good thing about, you know, you know, obviously having a, a very mature product is that it's been deployed thousands of times in the past. Um, so a lot of our competitors are just coming out with 10 gig products. A lot of them are brand new products for them. So, you know, they're going through, you know, like any new product, you know, you're going to have some issues as far as um, uh, user interface and hardware things, you know, things that, that, that crop up in new products. Um, so that's one of the good selling features about this product. You know, it's, it's, it's been, the platform has been out there for almost 10 years and really we're just adding on to it, you know, as far as with the platform itself. Uh, some features of it, um, uh, again, this is a 10 gig product and a one plus O setup. Uh, the channel sizes we support are 500 gig and two gigahertz. Uh, modulation level all the way up to 256 QAM. Options for ACM and ATPC. Uh, and also options for a two plus O configuration. Uh, networking features, um, uh, we have advanced networking carrier grade features. If, if that's what you require for your network needs. Uh, so that's an option. We have options for encryption um, and also options as far as for power, either you know, PoE, uh, direct 48 volt, or you can have both. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. So the user interface, uh, what you don't see is there's a, a, a lid that kind of screws into this. 
that covers you know, the, the back cover of the radio itself. Uh, you'll see there's two conduit openings in there. Um, so you can actually um, uh, run all your cabling, everything in there, and then you can get, uh, you know, taking off the cover, you'll get access to it. So you can see all the ports there. Uh, so you'll see that you, you know, have a number of gig ports, two and a half gig ports, and also a single 10 gig port. Uh, we also have options for CIPRI and also for TDM. So if you've got old OC3, OC12 that you want to be able to support, uh, there's an, a software option that you can do that with this product then. So, um, so pretty straightforward. Um, uh, a, a, again, it's a little different uh, with our, our navigator line, which has all the um, uh, ports on the external of the radio. Uh, this one has everything in the internal of the radio. So. Uh, on the 2 plus 0 setup, so we started shipping uh, the 20 gig product back in March of last year, so roughly about a uh, year time frame. Um, we've had a number of customers, surprisingly, you know, where 10 gig wasn't enough, where they needed to have 20 gig. Um, so we have a coupler uh, that uh, connects to the actual, the antenna. Uh, antenna options are one foot, two foot with this product. Uh, so the coupler connects there. And on that coupler, you can you can connect uh, two uh, radios to that, uh, as you can see in the picture to the left. Uh, this block diagram gives you a little more detail as far as how it works. So you can see we're running on both uh, vertical and horizontal polarization um, with the coupler. Uh, and then each one of those radios has its own uh, LAN connection. So that means you'll be running two 10 gig fiber uh, uh, runs you know, we'll call it radio A and radio B, and then you'll uh, bring that into a switch, and then your switch will have to aggregate that in there. So obviously make sure your switch supports more than 10 gig, you know, probably like a 40 gig or 100 gig, you know, type of switch. And then you can aggregate those together. So what this will do is provide you not only additional bandwidth, uh, but with the aggregation, you know, it really gives you um, some uh, diversity and also some redundancy. Uh, so each one of them has its own power, its own networking connections. Uh, so if you did lose one radio, for example, or maybe you lost power uh, to one radio or you had a fiber cut, uh, you have, you know, since you're doing aggregation, you know, you're just going down from uh, 20 gig down to 10 gig then. So, but again, very popular uh, uh, for customers that are looking for more data, uh, data capacity, more than 10 gig can provide you. So. Okay, CIPRI options. So we have a CIPRI option for this product. Uh, it's a different firmware. Um, so we have an option, you can license the CIPRI. So basically you convert the ethernet based product into a CIPRI based product. So you know, what's CIPRI all about? So basically there's two industries that are using CIPRI. Uh, one are DAS equipment manufacturers uh, are using CIPRI and also uh, LTE base station manufacturers using CIPRI. So this is a high speed serial interface um, with pretty much no management. Uh, it's just raw data going from point A to point B. Uh, it speeds up to 10 gig, um, which is you know, called mode seven CIPRI. Um, and then if you need to have more, uh, you can do the two plus O setup, which we've seen other people do, and then actually you know, get up the full 20 gig uh, offering. Uh, for CIPRI interfaces. So if you're looking to use it for DAS, the only thing I would say is, um, you know, uh, look at your DAS equipment. Just make sure they have a, a CIPRI port that has that uh, support into it. Uh, um, like I said, most of the LTE base stations, you know, CIPRI has pretty much been a standard. Uh, DAS, over the last couple of years, a number of the, the newer manufacturers have added that support in there. So. Uh, so what we've seen on the DAS support is where you can kind of have what's called a DAS hotel, where you have all the, the guts of the DAS system in one building, and then you can have remote buildings that, you know, using a CIPRI-based uh, 80 gigahertz radio, more or less broadcast that from building to building and have limited, you know, DAS equipment in there, uh, obviously reducing your cost to provide DAS to these remote buildings then, so. Uh, Adapt Path, another feature of the uh, product, comes standard with it. So um, this is a situation where you're extending maybe the 10 gigabit, 10 gigabit radio at, at the farther distance, and you know the laws of physics will be able to support it mainly for rain fade. Um, so you'll see, and we have a link availability calculator. You can kind of check it out. Um, so really, you know, when you're looking for um, on all the time, you're looking for five nines connectivity. But as you stretch that, 
even with two foot antennas, you're going to get reducing down below five nines uh, availability. So uh, what what customers have been doing this, you know, we've been offering this for since the original product, probably going back about 10 plus years, is the ability to connect in with uh, a backup radio. You know, and, uh, you know, 10 years ago, your backup radio was kind of um, an unlicensed five gigahertz radio, maybe put out 50 or meg or 100 meg. But now, you know, with licensed microwave supporting gigabit and higher, uh, we're seeing customers that will use uh, lower frequencies in licensed microwave, you know, be it uh, 11, 18, or 23 gigahertz, depending on the availability and as far as uh, how much capacity you want. But, you know, say I can take, you know, uh, a two or three mile path with 10 gigabit, you know, you know, where most cities, uh, you won't be able to get five nines, but now I can, you know, have uh, 11 or an 18 gigahertz, you know, gigri radio plugged right into the, the Bridgeway product. Uh, the Bridgeway product will automatically do the failover. So it senses the RSL level is going to be losing it pretty soon, and then it'll switch to the backup radio. So, so again, this is another way to extend distances uh, for 10 gigabit speeds, uh, where alone, you wouldn't probably get the availability that you can count on, you know, 24 seven. So channel plan, um, uh, channel plan for the radio. Uh, if, you know, for 10 uh, gigabits, uh, you need to use a two gigahertz channel size. So in the, the FCC setup, there's pretty much two channels. Um, and then if you want to reduce it down to a uh, gig or 500 megahertz, you can see, you know, different channels available for that. So, um, Again, most customers, unless you're in a very congested area where a number of other 80 gigahertz of radios are there, uh, most likely you're going to be using a, a, a 2 gigahertz channel size. So, And then just performances. So you can see uh, for 10 gig, we're at 128 QAM um, at the two, uh, 2 gigahertz. And then you can see what the link budgets are for using a 1 foot 10 antenna or a 2 foot antenna. So. Okay, so that's kind of just a quick overview on the product. Just want to get people caught up. Um, so it's a good time to take a break here. Um, I got a couple other poll questions I want to ask. So next question is, are you a current Bridgewave customer? Uh, so when I say customer, uh, do you have you bought the product? Have you sold the product? Have you supported the product? So I'll give everybody uh, about 30 seconds to answer the questions on that. Uh, again, we appreciate everybody's business over the years. You know, it's it's great that we've been shipping products since 2004, and remarkably, we still have original product. You know, that came out what 15 years ago, still operating today. You know, so okay, so it looks about 70% of the people on the call actually are are are, are current Bridgeway customers or partners of ours or have used the product, which is great. Okay, next question. Um, are you currently using outdoor point-to-point -point wireless? Uh, meaning, are you using it in your business environment or your enterprise network, or if you're a service provider in your, your backhaul network, or maybe one of our partners actually installing outdoor wireless? So I know if I ask this question, probably when we first started, you know, uh, 10, 12 years ago, the, the, the probably was maybe less than 10%. And just looking at poll numbers here, we're looking at close to 85%, you know. So things have definitely changed, you know, over the years as far as uh, companies and, and partners uh, using and, and, and selling outdoor wireless products. So, okay, appreciate you answering those questions. Okay, so we'll get, I got a couple other poll questions. We'll get to those, um, but let me, you know, continue on more of the presentation here. So, okay, so just a real quick review on the product itself. So we've shipped 500 radios. Uh, over the first 12 months of the production that based the product. And this is really going from December of uh, 2017 uh, to December 2018. So, uh, so you know, based on the industry uh, uh, analyst and the experts out there, you know, that made, that made Bridgewave the leader in the 10 gig wireless point-to-point -point segment. Small segment, but growing uh, really, you know, I mean, you know, before uh, we started shipping in what, uh, Q4 of 2017, there really was no 10 gig products out there. Uh, since then, you, there's a couple other competitors that come out there. But again, it's 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 a very you know niche kind of focused market, but growing because we're seeing 
you know, obviously enterprise customers going from gig to 10 gig backhaul in their enterprise networks, and the same thing with service providers. You know, you know, I'm seeing so many service providers that are offering customers point-to-point -point gig and higher connections that they couldn't do, you know, a number of years later because they just didn't have the bandwidth for that. Um, one of the remarkable things I saw with the numbers I got, so as far as the failure rate um, from uh, our support group, it our you know report that came out at the end of December. So basically, out of the 500 radios we shipped, we had eight uh, uh, RMA open cases that, or I should say, uh, RMAs that were opened. Out of those, seven were software or user uh, issues as far as you know customers needed help on the setup or maybe the software had to be refined or something like that, or had a bug or something like that, but really only one hardware failure over that 12-month period, which is pretty remarkable for a brand new product. And I think it kind of goes back to having you know, a, a fifth generation platform um, that's been out there 10 years um, that we're able to utilize, you know, again, compared to some of our competitors who are starting brand new you know, in this space. So as far as industries, so who's using 10 gig links? So I, I went back through our list of those 500 radios that we shipped and service providers are probably one of the bigger portions, uh, both in the US and worldwide, because uh, we ship uh, our products you know, in 60 countries around the world. Um, but you know, I, I, again, a number of service providers, both I would call tier one customers, you know, either using it for fixed wireless or for uh, LT backstation, uh, uh, base station, front uh, front hall and back hall um, as usage. The other thing we saw was a number of uh, government agencies, uh, both uh, federal and state agencies using uh, the product as far as for point-to-point -point connections. Healthcare has been an industry we've supported over the years uh, with imaging systems requiring a lot of bandwidth, so there's no surprise there. Higher education, same thing, uh, with a lot of them providing, you know, supporting internet too, um, you know, which requires 10 gig backhaul uh, and then insurance banking and a number of other industries. Um, you know, it's even uh, we've had a number of customers that use our old gigi products that actually upgraded to 10 gigi, you know, 10 gig products, you know, you know, so, so very interesting kind of back, uh, background as far as customers out there using, you know, 10 gigabit links over the last 10 years, uh, last year. Okay, so in the news, you'll see in our uh, uh, our website, there's a number of press releases that came out uh, with Bridgewave and various customers, you know, talking about you know what they're doing. I think the last one we did was for the new uh, Statue of Liberty Museum in New York City, uh, that's using Bridgewave for their point-to-point -point connectivity for the new museum. Um, so being able to you know backhaul from point A to point B, and then providing free Wi-Fi service to all their uh, visitors, you know millions of visitors that be going to the museum when it opens up this year. Um, and, and you can see a, a, a vast uh, kind of uh, uh, coverage as far as different industries. So we had state, local government, like I mentioned. Um, you know we had one for the Preakness back in uh, May. Uh, Next moves one of our uh, 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 partners that does a lot of DOD uh, work, uh, Pavla Media, which is more of um, uh, providing uh, high capacity to uh, MDUs. Um, so uh, a number of different you know, customers that were able to focus on pre uh, press releases, and we appreciate that as far as being able to share their stories. Uh, so other customers can kind of say, hey, you know, um, you know, this is not a, a new thing. You know, people are doing this, and I want to do it too. You know, so. Okay, so just want to go over some of the new features and part numbers uh, that we introduced over the last 12 months to make sure everybody's up to date uh, on the product itself. So what we did, you know, we first started uh, with the product, you know, uh, we had an individual part number for the Flex 4G 10,000, which is a five gig base radio. And then we added keys for capacity and ACM. And then, you know, obviously, you know, SAPs um, as far as for the, the fiber interfaces. To make things easier, we, we came out with a bundle, two, two different bundle part numbers. So, and they're both based on uh, what kind of uh, 10 gig SFP you want to go with. So the dash MM is a multi-mode 10 gig SFP, and the SM is a single mode 10 gig SFP. Surprisingly, you know, when we first started uh, 12, 30, 12, 13 years ago shipping product, I would say majority of people use multi-mode just because distances were short and it was uh, very expensive for single mode. Uh, but I think over the years, uh, the pricing uh, for the cabling is about the same. 
the differences on single mode, you can go much farther distances uh, than multi-mode. So I would say most customers have ordered 10 gig are using single mode SAPs these days. But, he has, uh, but we do have the option for both depending on what your needs are. So in the bundled, what we're doing is we're including a set of radios. Uh, we're going to include the, the capacity upgrade to 10 gig. We're including the ACM software and also uh, a set of uh, 10 gig SFPs. List price on this is 13400 uh, as far as for the whole bundle. You know, so, so that's for a complete link. So the only thing else you have to add, really add are antennas, either one foot or two foot or power. You know, either PoE injectors or 48 volt. And then we have options for warranty and encryption and some advanced networking features and things like that. But for the most part, this bundle pretty much gets you where you need to start at, you know. So uh, so it's an easy way to order the product. Uh, so you don't have to remember a, a bunch of different part numbers. You, you order one part number and you get pretty much a complete kit, you know, for the radio switch. So it makes it a lot easier. I know a lot of our competitors, you have to order, you know, Pi is hot six or seven different part numbers. They get the same thing. So with BridgeWave, it's one part number. So again, it's all what's making it easier for the customer for ordering is one of the big things that you know, we want to stress. As far as power options, we started with 48 volt pretty much. We added PoE and then we also added the outdoor PoE. Um, so you can see uh, the PoE does take a little more wattage compared to your, your standard PoE, you know, say 30, 35 watt PoE plus. So, you know, for in most cases, you can't just use an off the shelf switch. So that's why we have, you know, our own line of PoE injectors uh, that we sell with the product itself. Just make sure that if you order any of these power supplies and if you need an AC power cord, make sure you order that. I mean, you can buy your, buy your own or maybe you've got some existing around, sitting around, but just keep in mind that, you know, the, the cords are extra, that's all. Because since we sell in a number of different countries, each country is going to have a different requirement for a cord, so. Okay, so we did update the ACM software back in October 2018. Um, so if you're an existing customer and you have ACM feature, um, make sure you down, go to our uh, e-service center and download uh, the latest version of the software. It's a free upgrade, so you can just you know, download that and it'll give you some of the features on there. So what did we do? So the original version of the ACM software, um, you know, so I had ACM and we have uh, ATPC, which is uh, automatic transit power control. Those kind of work separately. So with the new software, they kind of work together now. So, so as you change down modulation level uh, in uh, different uh, modulation levels, so we start at 128 QAM, uh, you can see on the right-hand side uh, with ACM. And as we inc uh, go to different levels for uh, the modulation levels in ACM, you can see we're increasing uh, the transmit power. So the original product, you know, pretty much it's stuck at 10, you know, as far as uh, DBM, as far as the transmit power. So with the new product, we're going all the way up to 15 then. So you do take a little bit of a hit using ACM compared to, you know, if I was just locking into a certain uh, frequency, I mean, certain modulation level. And the reason behind that is we're switching early. So we're, we're not being able to get the maximum transmit power at each one of those modulation levels. But again, you know, it, it gives you the ability to uh, go to a uh, lower modulation level and, and get a little more fade margin. And that's really what you're doing. You know, you're trying to get a little more fade margin out of this. If you have short links, you're probably not going to use ACM. You're probably going to use more of the ATPC. Since that's a choice you have, you know, I can just, you know, use ATPC for a short link. Um, and then what I can do is I can just have the radio automatically control the transmit power uh, and then increase or decrease that uh, based on you know, what the RSL levels look like when I get some type of rain activity. So, But again, if you're an existing customer, I, I encourage you to go to our website, download the, the firmware, and then upgrade all your radios to make sure you know, you're using the new ACM feature. So we introduced a new uh, adapt rate. This came out, I believe, about a month ago. So it's a different software key. So this is for customers that have ACM already loaded, or if you're buying a product, you're buying the bundle product that has ACM. Uh, so this is adds, I would, I, I call it the third dimension. Uh, so what we're doing is, you know, before we had ACM, we had ATPC. So now we have Adaptrate. So what does that really do? And probably the easiest thing to do is kind of look at. Um, let me get my marker out here. Uh, highlighter. Okay, so basically, you know, when you use standard ACM, um, you know, you're, you're staying within your channel size. So, you know, if I'm here, 
uh, and a, a 10 gigabit with a standard ACM, what I'm doing is I'm staying within this channel size here. So I have this one dimension I'm staying at, and then I'm also you know increasing, decreasing as far as the power, so which is great. So with the new feature with adapt rate, what that allows me to do is now kind of go over to here. So you can see on the on the right hand side the receiver sensitivity. You know if I'm at six negative 64, you can see if I can go all the way over here. Now I'm at negative 71. So I picked up what seven dBm uh, in that process, and that's a big thing, especially for longer links where you're kind of on the edge, and maybe I'm using some of the ACM because of the rain fades and, and the distance of the link. Now all of a sudden, you know, now if I pick up additional receiver sensitivity. You know, that could be the difference of my link, you know, staying up or going down. Uh, so a, again, it's a good feature. Uh, for customers that have longer links uh, or maybe using a lot of the ACM now uh, and then want to have some extra insurance, they can use the adapt rate feature on it. So uh, again, the only restrictions on it are you have to have ACM already with it. Uh, adapt rate works with ACM. Uh, again, it's a different software key, uh, different part number. If you have any questions on ordering that, you know, talk to me, you know, send an email, talk to one of our distributors or, you know, on my counterparts, you know, that take care of other customers around the world. Uh, they'll be able to help you out with that. But it's a nice new feature that we added to the product itself. Okay, let me get rid of this stuff here. Okay, XPix another new feature. So this is actually a, a new product. Uh, so it's a different radio. Um, so when you order the XPix model, uh, it's going to be a little different because it works a little differently than the standard uh, uh, product that we've been shipping, you know, you know, since December 2017. So why do I need XPix? So XPix, this is a little different than say in the microwave world. In the microwave world, when you do XPix, you think you're going to double capacity. Um, in, in this situation here is we're using XPIC mainly because of congestion. So what we've seen in uh, a lot of areas, like we've seen it in LA, we've seen it in New York City, where you get these pop sites. So these are the locations for the internet service provider. This is where, you know, where, where you're getting your, your main line to the internet. And you're looking at some of these uh, facilities in these major areas where you're seeing uh, I wouldn't say hundreds of it, but you might see 50, 60, 80 gigahertz radios on the same rooftop. So there's only so much frequency and availability. Even though that the antennas are, uh, the beam widths are narrow, we're talking what 0.9 degrees for a one foot and 0.4 degrees for two foot. So you don't take up a lot of that spectrum. Even, even in that situation, we're seeing that um, there are areas where I can't get a two gigahertz uh, channel to get 10 gig. Maybe I only can get one gigahertz. So in that situation, you know, with the old product, you know, my max speed is roughly five gig. But if I want 10 gig, what do I do? Well, that's why we came out with the XPIC product. So now I can have two XPIC radios, uh, both running at a gigahertz uh, as far as channel sizes. Uh, we've got a little uh, XPIC cable in that, and that all it does is it uh, you know, keeps the radios in sync. Uh, it doesn't do any RLA, so you still have to run two 10-gig uh, fibers, one to each radio, and then you have to aggregate those in your switch. But at least now you can get 10-gigabit uh, connections in areas where congestion is very heavy. You know, so so again, I, I think for the most part, especially in the U.S., you know, getting you know 80-gigabit spectrum is pretty easy. Um, Probably not a big seller on that, but again, I, I think over time, especially in larger cities, uh, you're going to see congestion, and this is going to be another option for you to be able to get 10 gig when you can only get one gigahertz spectrum. Uh, the one thing I will say is I know in Canada, they're going to be, thank, thank God, they're finally uh, going to be doing something on the uh, uh, cost. And uh, as far as for uh, higher capacity radios, I believe in April 2020, so roughly over a year time period. And what the Canadian government, and the way they charge, they, they, they charge a little different than the U.S. government. But I know talking with a lot of customers in Canada uh, on XPIC uh, is that it'll be a lot cheaper actually to use an XPIC compared to non-XPIC connections. Uh, so actually the way they charge the, the licensing up there within a couple of years, uh, the, the money that you actually save uh, using XPIC will actually pay for that second radio. So, so that's something just to watch out for. So.
Okay, um, so that's kind of the new features and stuff we added. Uh, we've got some other stuff in the works, you know, for later this year uh, that we'll talk about. I mean, if there's anything that you're looking for that we don't have, you know, in our 80 gigahertz, 10 gig radios, please let us know. We're always looking for suggestions, looking for feedback from customers, you know, coming out with features and things like that. So I just wanted to, you know, review a couple because we're we're getting a lot of customers that are upgrading old links. Um, especially old 80 gigahertz products. Uh, if you have some of our old 60 gigahertz products, uh, unfortunately, you know, there's there's not, there's some stuff you can reuse. So probably the cabling you can reuse, uh, especially if you have single mode fibering uh, and then you can reuse the low voltage. Uh, as far as on the mast, if you had at least, uh, we require at least a three inch OD mast for the one foot. So if you're using that for the 60, you can reuse that, uh, but you can't re reuse the antennas because most of those were integrated antennas. But for our, 80, our older 80 gigahertz customers, you can pretty much reuse everything that you do have there. Um, so you can see this picture here. Uh, you can, you know, if you have the 10,000, but say you're going from an old uh, GE80 or a Flex UA, UA or X, uh, Flexport 80 and you're looking for more bandwidth, uh, pretty much, you know, you can reuse the antenna. Uh, as long as, you know, and I'm assuming the mass and everything were, were set up correctly. Uh, the low voltage wiring you can reuse. And, and then if you had, like I said, uh, single mode, you can reuse it definitely. Uh, Multi-mode, you'll need the aqua fiber to do 10 gigs. So you have to check on that. Uh, but in a lot of customers' cases, it's it's pretty much take down one radio, pop up another one. You probably want to rerun the availability charts because you are going to be running at a higher modulation level than some of the older radios. And just you know, just want to make sure what your availability is. Uh, but that's one of the good things. I know with some of our competitors, they use different antennas, you know, for their one gig and 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 their 10 gig products. Uh, so there's not a lot of reuse. But in the Bridgewave side, there is reuse. So. And this kind of just gives you some ideas as far as what we're looking. Uh, the one thing you can keep in mind, uh, if you're looking at some of the classic radios, I call those the GE, AR, and FE80 radios. They're probably about 8 to 9 to 10 years old. Those were all volt based on 20 volt uh, uh, DC. So definitely change out the power supply and surge protection. Uh, you don't want to, you know, put a 24 volt power supply in a 48 radio, 40 volt radio, or you're going to run into some serious issues, you know. So, uh, on some of the fl newer radios like the 80 uh, Flexport 80 UHA 3000, 5000, uh, those already had uh, 48 volt. Uh, those already had the uh, one inch uh, flex opening, so everything's there. Uh, I will, you know, warn you on on the networking side. If you had some of the classic radios, those radios you pretty much just took out of the box. You did the alignment, you plugged in your fiber, it did an auto calibration, and away you went. With the new radios, now you've got you know uh, ports to set up, you've got Q and Q, you've got VLANs and so on. So again, you know, just read the manual. Um, you know, most people have you know you know basic networking skills that we we sell to and the partners we work with. Uh, so again, if you, if you just don't show up on site with one of these radios and swap it out and pop it in there, because you know we, we've got calls before and say, hey, you know, it didn't work, and it's it's like, well, did you read the manual? And it, again, you you go through and you got to set ports and things like that. Again, maybe an extra 20 minutes, half hour, you know, to do something like that, and everything will work fine. But again, just be prepared when you go out there. So. Okay, so that's all the slides I had today to kind of give you an update on the product line. Uh, I've got a couple other uh, poll questions. While I'm doing that, if you have any questions, uh, just go to the questions section uh, and just you know type in whatever questions you have, and I'll get to those at the end of the, uh, the webinar. So, okay, next one is: Do you have uh, a current outdoor wireless project in the works? <laughs> Either uh, working on something or not working on something. Um, or so this could be an end user or a service provider or one of our uh, uh, installation partners, you know. So just curious as far as the people in the audience, uh, how many actually have active uh, outdoor wireless projects in the works? <coughs> okay. Now we're getting a couple of fun questions here. Uh, do you have an active project that requires 10 gigabit bandwidth? So this is kind of up, uh, upping the ante, you know. Now we're not now we're not we're talking about one gig or two gig. Now we're talking about 10 gig. So do you have any of your projects that you're you know specking out right now or working with customers that require 10 gig today? 
or or want to have 10 gig i should say you know so you know so so some people you know maybe not require it but they're requesting that you have a product that supports 10 gigs so that way you know maybe i only need gig today but you know down the line i don't you know i'm, I'm going to have this product that's going to work for the next five to ten years uh so i want to make sure it's going to be supporting something that i'm going to use you know down the line so Okay, so roughly about a third, which is pretty remarkable, you know, about a third of the audience as far as actually having a requirement for 10 gigs. So. And last one, which is another interesting one, have you installed or purchased a 10 gig radio yet? So you know, it doesn't have to be Bridgewave, it could be one of our competitors or something like that. But just curious, how many people in the audience actually have actually purchased or installed a 10 gig radio? I mean, they've only been available for the last year or so, so not a long time period, uh, but just curious. Okay, we'll close that one out. So interesting fact, 25% of the audience has purchased a 10 gig radio, which is pretty interesting since it's, it's a brand new market. It's only been around you know, less than two years, so. Okay, so let, let me get into this. I'm going to stop the recording now, and then I'll get to your questions, and then we'll wrap up the webinar. Again, real short, just want to have a quick 30-minute update. Uh, I appreciate everybody you know, that, uh, that you know, came into the webinar. A again, this uh, online webinar uh, will be available you know, after recording, and then you'll get a link for it then.